Jeremiah 33, 1. The Bible says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, So, Jeremiah is in prison, and the word of the Lord comes unto him. Somebody say, Hallelujah. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Uh -huh. Verse 3. He says, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Somebody read that verse with me again. Want to go? Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Uh, I want you to look at this situation. The prophet of God, the man of God is in prison. And uh, the word of the Lord comes unto him and God tells him, call unto me. I thought God would ask Jeremiah to call unto him so that he takes him out of prison. Call unto me and I will take you out of prison. Who gets what I'm talking about? I really thought that's what God would say. You know, it's very interesting how God relates with us. God does not think we have a weak side. Come on, somebody. You know, one time I was sharing with people and I told them that Joshua loses his spiritual father. Moses dies in Joshua chapter 1. Moses dies. And the Bible says that when Moses, the servant of God, died, God spoke to Joshua, the servant of Moses, and he told him, now that Moses is dead, he told him, go forward, move forward. And then he starts to tell him, be courageous, be very courageous, do this and this. He starts to give him instructions. He doesn't think Joshua has to weep, cry, be broken, my dad. You know what I mean? God does not think we have a weak side. Somebody say amen. So I choose to think like that to Gamba Amina. So the man of God is in prison and God says, call unto me and I will answer you. The answer is, I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Somebody say hallelujah. This then means that many of the things that represent prison in our lives, many of the things that represent bondage in our lives, are not really the, the center of focus when it comes to God speaking to us. God cannot speak to you so that he gets you out of prison. God cannot speak to you so that he gets you out of poverty. Many of the children of God have been trained to relate with God according to need, according to what we don't have. You know, God, I, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Father, I'm praying so that you give me this job. Father, I'm praying so that you give me this, this marriage, so, so that you give me this car, so that you give me this visa in the name of Jesus, I claim it fire. No. God thinks what you need is that he shows you something. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. He knows that when he gives you a vision, even if you're in prison, it won't matter. He knows that if he gives you a vision, even if the devil wants to limit you anyway, it won't matter. He, all he thinks that you need is a vision. No matter what's around you, if you have a vision, he thinks everything will go well. Somebody say amen. So he tells him, call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you, you, you just need to see something. All that you're going through is not a factor. What you need is to see something. When you get the vision of this thing I want to show you, everything will be okay. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Now by this verse, God now lets us know that what matters is what you see. Gamba amen. What matters is what you see. What <laughs> you are where you are because of what you see. The prison to God was not a factor. All he wanted was this man to see something. You remember Abraham our father. The Bible is very clear. God, God wanted to give him a vision. You go to a land that I will show you. God wants to show him. He wants to give him a certain vision. He wants to show him something. And he knows that if he receives that something, if he sees that something, everything will be okay. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. So ask your neighbor, what do you see? Tell, ask them again, what do you see? What's the vision on your spirit? What's the vision on your eyes? What's the vision on your soul? What's the vision in your, in, in your meditation? What's the vision? What he wants to do for you is to give you a vision. That when you have that vision, everything else will be sorted. Somebody say amen. You remember um, Ephesians, Ephesians 4.17. Look at what he says. He says, uh -huh, this I say, uh -huh. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. That word vanity is emptiness of their minds. <laughs> uh, did, did you catch something there? 
you know, I, I, I hear people say, uh, you, you know, many people are lost and they don't even realize they are lost. Somebody says, when you're meditating, empty your mind. So he says, don't walk like the Gentiles walk, in the emptiness of their mind, uh -huh. having their, under, when your mind is empty, your understanding is darkened. And when your understanding is taken, he says you are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in you, that is in them, uh -huh. because of the blindness of their hearts. You see, the biggest problem God has with these guys, the Gentiles, is because they don't have a vision. He says their eyes are blind, their understanding is darkened. Who says what I'm talking about? So when he calls them to salvation, when he wants them to get born again, he wants them to be born again so that he gives them a vision. Because, you know, the, the Bible says, uh, uh, Proverbs 29 verse 18, I think. Look at that. The Bible says, where there is no vision, uh -huh, where there is no vision, the people perish. People don't perish because uh, the devil is strong. People don't perish because uh, uh, the government is unfair. He says, they perish because there is no vision in their lives, in their families, in their ministries, in their nations. He says, where there is no vision, people perish. Now, when you read this in the New Kingdoms, I think, look at what it says. Now, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. One time I read a book, very fascinating, very, very fascinating. And the gentleman said, in that book, he said, that everything you want to manifest in your life that isn't manifesting, it is only not manifesting because you have built so much resistance toward it, for it to come your way. Who, who got what I say? Okay, let me give you an example. Do we have a switch for darkness? Talk to me. Talk to me. If you want darkness in a room, what do you do? You hinder light. You know what I mean? If we wanted this room to be dark, we'll just cover every place where light passes to come in. You know what I mean? When you want darkness in a room at night, you just switch off the light. Do you get the thing? It means darkness sometimes is proof that light is resisted. Who gets what I'm talking about? Darkness, it is just proof that light is resisted. So some people resist light. Oh, okay, now let's take it in terms of health, you know. Health can be light, sickness can be darkness. Prosperity can be light, uh, poverty can be darkness. You see what I mean? And now, according to this understanding I'm giving us right now, it means that every unwanted situation in your life is only there because you have resisted the, the situation you desire. This wouldn't be possible if, if, if you know... <laughs> he said in Deuteronomy, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. And then he tells them, I ask you to choose life. He wouldn't say that if what I'm saying isn't true. Look, uh, I call heaven, I call heaven and ask to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life, uh -huh, that both you and your seed may live. Somebody say amen. God in this verse is trying to wash himself off the responsibility of your suffering. He says if you see blessing in your life, it is because you chose it. It's not because I gave it. No, I gave to everybody. I gave to every man. The Bible says he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Somebody say amen. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. But now, as to whether it is going to manifest in your life or not, you either have to put down what what resists it from manifesting in your life and allow it to manifest in your life or you're going to stay the way you are and you know many people don't realize that choosing is not when you say i choose no 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 choosing starts from how you think from how you respond from how you answer back from from, from how you relate with circumstances the circumstances around you may not be your responsibility but how you respond to them how you react to them is your responsibility Somebody say amen. And it is that responsibility that determines the next step of your life. Who gets what I'm talking about? A thought, a, a thought may come to you. Uh, I usually give this example. <laughs> Some of you, they are Christians. When they dream something bad, 
They would want to know the interpretation thereof. They would want to understand. What does it mean to dream when a snake is in your neck? And as you're trying to get it out and running away, you meet a crocodile. And you see, when you tell them that, oh, that means God is going to give you a zoo, they say, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I think it means, now they will go to, the, to, to, to another uh, prophet who will tell them, that the snake is the generational curse of your mother. Speak prophet. The crocodile are the demons coming from the lake. Hey, yeah, so you're surrounded by the demons from your mother's side and the demons, when you want to run away from those demons, there are demons waiting for you. Oh my God, deliver me. Let me tell you what just happened there. You just chose death. At that point, you've chosen death. But you didn't even know. You know what I mean? When you have pain in your body, when you feel pain in your body, you can choose to say, the life of God is in me. You can also choose to say, wait, you can also choose to say, hey, I have a lot of pain in my body, I don't know what I'm... Hey, hey! You're, you're choosing death without knowing. And before you know it, it is growing and growing and growing and growing. And nobody can do nothing about it, not even God. Because, I mean, if I am I going to take away from you what you've chosen? I won't be respecting your choice. One of the things that make God God is because he respects human will. That's one of the things that make him God. The devil doesn't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who gets what I'm talking about? So, you put resistance. One time a lady came to me. Ah, apostle. Come say yes, please. Ah, somebody, I was phoned. I was like, shakata. Praise the Lord. Then she told me, but I want you to pray so that he doesn't change his mind. I was like, Rabbi? Yeah. You, you, okay, maybe, let me say this. Let me say this. This is very important because many Christians don't understand it. In the spirit world, when the Bible says that all things are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, you're getting me? Take away the person Jesus and put the, in the spirit world. You understand? In the spirit world, there is no exclusion of things. There is only inclusion of things. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. In the spirit, for things to come from the spirit world into the physical world to manifest, they feed on one thing, attention. You see what I mean? When you give something attention, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter whether you're saying no to it or yes to it, it will manifest in your life. Who, who gets what I'm talking about? Let me explain what I mean. Uh, there are Christians who have dedicated their lives to casting out the demons of poverty, the demons, they're not getting married demon, they're not driving car demon, they're not... Listen, listen. And you see, in your head you feel like you're under... The reason why the law is the knowledge of sin is because it says, thou shalt not steal. The, the, the real center of attention there is stealing. You know what I mean? The mind, the, your spirit, your soul, your, it doesn't know how to exclude what it has focused on. The moment you focus on it, it doesn't know how to say, to, to, who gets what I'm talking about? Thou shalt not kill. The, the real set of attention there is kill. So when you say, I refuse to be sick, the real thing there is sick. And brother, you will be sick. Until you grow up a little bit, somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. There is nothing we call like negative attention. There is no negative attention that resists. Wait. Science explains this like this. Science says potential energy is dormant, is dormant until it is observed. Do you get what I mean? So when you observe it, it turns into matter. When you don't observe it, it stays the way it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, listen. Whether you're observing it the right way or the wrong way, the thing is you're observing it. When the Bible says that we should look not on the things that are seen but on the things that are not seen, understand that he is trying to say, you need to feed your attention with something that you need to manifest in your life. Ask your neighbor, what do you see? Ask them again, what do you see? 
Praise the Lord. Many people don't understand. When the Bible says that the man thinketh in his life, so is he. Many people have not understood that. You know, I, I, I want to take you from being good to being excellent. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you are good. You, you know what I mean? You're, you're good. You, 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 even when you're talking about negative things, you talk about them in. You, you know what I mean? You, you, you say, I, refu I cannot be sick. And that's wonderful. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is something more excellent. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You, you, you're getting me very well? Now, without a vision, people cast this train. You see? So, <laughs> When you don't have a vision, you start to cast resistant energy, resistant power to everything that has to come in your life. Because you don't see. When you don't see, you see darkness. And you cast darkness in your family, you cast it in your marriage, you cast it everywhere. And, and you know, there is no, you see, when he says that my people perish because they lack knowledge, understand that in men, there is no amount of prayer that can give you permanent results. You know I pray, you, you know I pray, so I'm not against prayer. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. But you see, we cannot raise a generation that thinks they are going to meditate things, think things, feed their minds on things, and then they expect the man of God to say, fire, go. My, the man of God just laid one hand and my life changed. <sighs> All I need is a hand from the man of God. Yes. It works. I believe in impartation. You understand? But you see, the man of God, the woman of God, is calling something to life that you've watered. If there is nothing you've watered, brother, you're going to roll, scream, do whatever you want, and your life will stay the same. Let me tell you something you need to understand. Paul says that who is Paul, who is that person? Except men by whom you believe. Men have an end in our lives. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. There is a place where you take responsibility for your life. There is a place where when the man of God, when the woman of God gives you the word of God, gives you what to think about, gives you what to feed your attention with, the rest is your problem. The rest is your responsibility. Somebody say amen. And why am I saying all this? So that you should know that you have the power to change whatever things you want to change. When Jesus said that all things are possible, he meant what he said. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. And if you're ready to follow the, the rules of possibilities, the rules of, ooh, the, rule, the rules that expand men, the rules that increase men, all things are possible unto you. Somebody say hallelujah. So God wants to give you a vision. God wants to make you see something. Say, mm. It is because men don't see. You remember he said, hey, John chapter 4 verse 35, I think. Look at that. He said, say not, John 4, eh? Uh-huh, want to go read for me. He said, say, say not ye, uh-huh, they are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest, uh-huh. Behold, I, uh, hey, hey, did you catch it? He says, behold, uh-huh, I say unto you, uh-huh, lift up your eyes. Did you catch that? He says, don't say, they are yet four months for me to receive my breakthrough. Don't say, they are yet six months for me to enter marriage. Don't say, they are yet 19 months for me to have this and that. Don't say, they are yet, oh, he says, don't say, he says, lift up your eyes. Oh, focus on things above. When you do that, he says, you will see that the fields are white and ready. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Tell you never lift up your eyes. So, do you realize he wants you to have a lifted vision? He, eh, woo, there is this version. Uh, it's called uh, the Passion Translation. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Look at it in, the, in that version. I love how it says it. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why... Woo, 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 <laughs> this is why... We are to yearn for all that is above. Tell anybody, lifted vision. 
He says, we are to yearn for all that is above, for that's where Christ sits, enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. Uh -huh. Verse 2 says, yes, sit on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with the heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Say the neighbor, God wants to give you a vision. God wants to choose what you see. He wants to choose what you think. He wants to choose what you meditate. He cannot change your life except he gives you a certain kind of vision. Even if he took you out of prison, you can be out of prison, but just you stay in prison. Why? Your vision is in prison. Because when you don't have a vision, you only throw to your life, you throw to your everything, things that restrain you, things that restrict you, things that don't allow you to go far. So he wants to give you a vision. He wants to change how you look at this. This is why he says that the communication of your faith, what you talk about in faith, will become effectual. It will work. It will become operative when you acknowledge what? Every what? Good. Not everything. He says that you acknowledge every good thing that is in you that is in Christ Jesus. He says what you talk about in your faith will work. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Because God knows that acknowledging is the rule of manifestation. Anything you acknowledge has the power to manifest. Anything you acknowledge has the power to come. You know, okay, look at me. He says all things are possible unto him. He says, if thou canest believe, all things are possible unto him that believes. Now, think about it. How do we believe? What is faith? The substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know what I mean? Do you see that by that standard, faith has a vision? And it's by that vision that all things are possible. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I was telling people that when God was creating the earth in Genesis chapter 1, uh, at this level we all know that was the second creation because when he creates in chapter 1 verse 1, between verse 1 and verse 2 the devil comes in, destroys it, blah, 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 and then he has to create it again. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. At this level we know that and we know the scriptures. You know, if you study very well the scriptures, that's very clear. But, this is my emphasis now, I was telling people that when you're reading that creation account, you realize that there were things God was creating for the first time, same mm -hmm. and then there were things he was just calling back. I'll give you an example. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the surface, the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Let's continue. And God said, what? Let there be light. That language right there means that light existed. He was just calling it back into manifestation. Somebody say amen. And I told the people, the Hebrew rendering of that is light be. You understand? He was talking to an entity in existence. Somebody say amen. And when God said, let us make man in our own image, it means man didn't exist. You, you know what I mean? He didn't exist before. When he says, uh, like in, I think verse 14, he says, and God made two great lights. Those two great lights didn't exist before. You understand? So, well, but, but when he says, let the earth bring forth grass, it means there was grass before. Do, do you understand what I mean? Do you get what I'm talking about? Now, why do I say that? I, I, I say that to explain this. So, there was darkness. Tell them about there was darkness. Tell them again, there was darkness. The Bible says it was covering the face of the deep. Now, but God said, light be. Say, ah. Uh, that's where that thing is. He didn't say, you light. Go. Go, we don't want you here. Go. He just gave light attention and light manifested. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. He just gave light attention and light manifested. So he says, 
whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, uh, whatsoever things, uh, whatsoever, uh, and finally, brethren, finally, in other words, if you forget anything, don't forget this. He says, brethren, uh, whatsoever things are true, uh, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says what? Think on these things. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you something we need to all understand. The reason is why God is very careful of what you must think about. You know, that's vision right there. He wants you to have a vision of pure things. He wants you to have a vision of just things. He wants you to have a vision of honest things. And the reason he wants you to do that is because the life of God is in you. The power of God is in you. But all these things will be dormant in you because they feed on attention to be activated. Who gets what I'm talking about? That's why some of you, when you came to a ministry, ha, let me explain something very important. This is the Bible. Tell your neighbor this is the Bible. And what it says is what we agree with. It's all good. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Amplified by. One to go read for me. One to go read. Ah uh, ah, uh, Neda. One to go read. Uh huh. Stop. So Paul is the bond servant of Jesus Christ, an apostle, a special messenger of Jesus Christ. Now. What does, as, how do we know a special messenger? What does it do? What does it do? Read. First, wait. If a minister is sent of God, he only stimulates and promotes your faith. Gamba Amina. Gamba Amina. This is the Bible. If you hear somebody and your faith is not stirred up, they, probably they had from somewhere else. Do you know how many summons we had and built fear in us? Do you know how many summons we had and wondered whether we are going to heaven or not? He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, a special messenger, to stimulate and promote the faith of God's chosen ones, uh, and to lead them on to accurate discernment and recognition of an acquaintance with the truth, which belongs to and harmonizes with and tends to God manifest in the flesh. A minister of Jesus Christ is there to build your faith. I'm somebody say amen. And he's there to show you things that prove that God is alive in you in the flesh. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Do you know what he wants you to show? To, do you know why God chooses to identify with such ministers? It's because as I preach to you, as information comes to you, revelation comes. Somebody say amen. When I open my mouth to say what, revelation comes to you. When revelation comes to you, it forms the way you think. Gamba Amina. When it forms the way you think, it changes your point of attraction. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Some of you, when you came here, you stopped being sick. When you came here, you stopped... By the way, I've never had a nightmare. <laughs> And if you're having nightmares, you go against the day. You come by Amina. Some of you are having nightmares. You couldn't sleep. You couldn't do what? The problem was not that the devil was trying to. No. No. You are listening to the wrong summons. And because you are listening to the wrong summons, you were yielding to the wrong power. You are. First wait, first wait. I show you a verse. Well, you, you know there are verses I read and I take off. You, you put the Bible down and run. I show you one. Mark chapter three, verse twenty-seven. Let's look at that. Now you remember. This, let me give you the background. Then you read. Jesus. They saw Jesus casting out demons, and they said, "Ah, oh. he does it by Beelzebul." Like some people, when they see somebody rich, they say they are rich by demons. <laughs> so, they saw him casting out demons and they say, oh, 
that one. He does it by the priest of demons, Beelzebub. So, he explains to them, oh, how can the kingdom be divided, blah, 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 blah. But then, then he comes here. So you understand? So read now. Let me tell you the problem with the devil and Christians. When Christians read that verse, do you know how they read it? Do you, I, I show you how they read it. You, you tell me. This is how they read it. When you're going to enter a strong man's house to spoil his goods, first bind the strong man and then you will spoil his house. Mukama yeba ziwe. Munzire mo. Mukama yeba ziwe. Katinga te tunarumba sitani. Tukena soka kola chi. Kumusiba kusibani. Strong man. Watuma lo siba strong man tuleka tukole tutia. Tunyage. Bulichafe chona. Gamba muno tuke nda kunyaga. Bulichafe chona. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, now. Is that what the scripture says? No, you tell me. You see, so they tell us that some of your to stalk a strong man, then they took the cup of Zimo No, you know, one time I was somewhere and a man read, he said, Before we pray, let us read the verse. So, you know, they said, uh, they read this verse. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed and behold, all things have become new. Do, do you need an addiction to interpret that? Listen to how the gentleman said. Then he said, Mukama Eva Sibwe. E chawan di kwa chigambe la bebi kade biko ze bichia. Kati sawa ya kuma buli chikade. Ebi pia bije. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, no matter how much, if you can't, you can't call it here. Okay, look at this. Let, let, me, let, me, let me show you what caught my eyes here. Jesus says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his goods. Do you know what that verse means? Jesus is trying to say. You know, they were saying he uses the power of demons to cast out demons. Jesus was trying to say, I wouldn't spoil the little demon if I had not first beaten this guy you're calling. Uh -uh, no, you didn't get it, did you? D did you get it? Jesus' problem was not that they said he uses Beelzebub to cast out demons. His problem was they are comparing him to a power laser. D did you get it? Did you get it? Ah. I said, no, no, no. Listen, I cannot be beating up these two guys. And you think, you're thinking their master is free. I first dealt with the master, then I started beating up this guy. So there is no way you can say he's using me. No, 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 no. When Nasoko Kola, you, you know what I mean? Somebody say hallelujah. That lets you know that the devil has no power. Gamba Amin. Musumba, Nalose, Nalose. Yes, Nalose, but it means nothing. Let me tell you, teach this to yourself. Exercise it every day. When you see a good dream, take it. When you see a bad dream, some Christians are like this. When they get a good dream, maybe they dreamt, maybe uh, uh, they were ministering in Fanero, they say, dreams are stupid. Can you imagine that I dreamt me, 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 me. Dreams are so stupid. I dreamt in Bunga I'm preaching. It's me. Then they dream. <laughs> when something is chasing them, for them that's the real dream. You have a blind vision. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God give you vision. Somebody say amen.
Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. He says, same note that they are yet from back. He says, when you see with the lifted vision, you will see. You will see. Ooh. He says, you will see that the fields are quiet and ready. Somebody say amen. When you see with the lifted vision, you will see that your life is well. You will see that victory is yours. You will see that the life of God is in you. You will see that you are above. You, you will see. A lifted vision is a vision from God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. How you look at things, how you look at your life, how you respond to things. Let me tell you, oh, life is easy to change. Anything is possible. It's just because people don't have a vision. And because they don't have a vision, they start to put Lord blocks. They start to, 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 to resist what has to come to them. You're getting let me say this, the last. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If he says that, be careful how you think. But you see, the carefulness I'm calling upon is this. Many people are going to get. You know what I mean? They are going to have. Who gets what I'm talking about? They are going to be. Who gets what I'm talking about? For your own information, the New Testament has no promise. Not even heaven is a promise. We are citizens of heaven. We, we sit in heaven. With, uh, somebody say amen. Not even heaven is a promise. Gamba, amen. God is not planning to do anything for you. The moment you position yourself to thinking that you're going to have, it means you will always live as one going to have. Many people think, I mean, that's good already. That's good. I mean, yeah, it's good to think you're, your life is going to change. You're, it's good to think you're going to have. It's good to think you're going to be. No. But hey, grow up a bit. Somebody say amen. Go a little higher. Somebody say amen. And see that you are. And see that you have. And see that you've been. You know what I mean? Until you change that prayers will create short fixes and the same things will come back again. Because a door, a house swept is an empty mind that has no vision. And the Bible says when the devil is cast out, it goes back in the dry places and then it comes back into his house to see whether the house is swept. And when it finds it swept, it calls for many other demons. An empty mind casts darkness. Many of you cast darkness to your future, to your everything, because your vision is... How do you know your vision is bad? When you look at the physical things and you think they have the power to stop you. God knew Jeremiah is in prison, but he doesn't need to get out of prison. He just needs a vision. You don't need a car. You don't need a visa. You don't need a man. You don't need a woman. You don't need nothing. Let God give you a vision. The vision I'm talking about is the right understanding of the life he has given you in Christ Jesus. Respond like that. Think like that. There is no telling what your life can be. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Free yourself from all fears. The things around you are not real. Do you know how I know they are not real? Do you know how I know? Because they can change. Anything that can change is unreal. Because if it can change, it means it's not eternal. And if it's not eternal, it's not real. And if it's not real, it's an illusion. It can change. Somebody say amen. It is your meditation. It is your focus. Your, the attention you give it that sometimes tries to make it appear real. Hallelujah. Look known that the things that are seen. 
but at the vision God has given you. That vision is his word. See yourself victorious. See yourself uh, conquering. See yourself increasing. He says, and God is able to make all grace abound, that you being fruitful in everything, you may abound unto good works. Listen, see abundance in your life. See increase in your life. See multiplication in your life. See progress in your life. In the name of Jesus, I'm increasing every day. There is no telling of what your life can be. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody stand up on your feet. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. God has brought life and light to immortality. Ah. Life and immortality to light. There is life in you, child of God. There is victory for you every day. The Bible says He always causes us to triumph. He always causes us to triumph. Open your eyes and see. He says, consider not the former things of all. He says, Behold, I do a new thing. He says, Consider not. Verse 18. He says, Remember ye known the former things of old, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. He says, Behold, look. I will do a new thing. You open your eyes and see. I will do a new thing. That pain is unreal. That limitation is unreal. Come on, somebody, open your mouth and speak to God. Come on, somebody. Rabba baba baba zipato ramanda rabba kala lavai ne pakata laba shanda rabba kayaba. He says, as far as your eyes can see, I have given you. What do you see, child of God? Rabba kata laba zare de reba shata. He says to Jeremiah, because thou has seen well, I'm behind my word to hasten it. What do you see, child of God? What do you hope for the future? What do you hope for your children? What do you hope for your generation? What do you hope for your nation? He says, fill your minds with heavenly realities, not with the distractions of the earth. Come on, somebody. Say something to your life. Say something to your life. I'm anointed of the Holy Ghost. I'm anointed with power. I'm anointed with glory. The Lord crowns my life every day. The Lord increases my life every day. The Lord multiplies me on all sides. In the name of Jesus, I live from above. I live from above. I'm above all. I'm above all. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. I'm anointed to succeed. I'm anointed to bless. I'm anointed to multiply men. I'm anointed to increase life. In the name of Jesus. Rabarade Sata. Rata Rabakurabaye. Le Sheparada Rabaya. Rata Rabasereba. I'm full of life. The life of God is in me. He says this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son of Jesus. Whosoever has the Son has that life. You have the life of God in you. You have the power of God in you. That is what works. He says building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost.
in the name of Jesus and depression, fear, confusion, those three things are broken. You were bordering on running mad, but that says the spirit of the living God. There is not enough darkness to extinguish the light in you. And it says that light arises in you right now in the name of Jesus. And what that devil aims for bad, child of God, you're having a testimony in the name of Jesus. I rebuke emotional stress. I rebuke emotional stress. I, I rebuke depression in the name of Jesus. Somebody you are bordering on running mad. Thoughts of running mad where if you were you were you were thinking of running out of your house, of running into a wall, of, of undressing yourself to run around. That confusion is no more. There is enough light in you to turn any situation around. In the name of Jesus, hope is restored. Hope is restored in the name of Jesus. God is able to establish your life. God is able to change your life for the best. God is able to increase your life. God is able to build your life again in the name of Jesus. That says the spirit of the living God. Receive it in your life. If that's you, receive it. Receive it. Power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus thank you Lord now if you're here and you've not received Jesus Christ Jesus is not Lord of your life please come right now come and confess Jesus come and make Jesus the Lord of your life I want you to say out loud Lord Jesus let me hear you Lord Jesus today I believe that you died for my sins and you rose again for my justification. I confess you as the Lord of my life and I confess you as the Savior of my soul. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. Amen.